activity in the crypto space carried out by cyber criminals to reveal the identity of a person or company. After getting hold of an individual's identity, they can do a couple of things including blackmail, selling the stolen identity or initiating some form of social engineering and so on. Want to learn more about dusting attacks and how to protect your Bitcoin against it? Just sit back, relax and keep on watching. Hello, Adrian here for Bitcoin for Beginners. In this series, Bitcoin Elementary, we will explore a wide range of aspects specifically related to Bitcoin. Today's episode is about dusting attacks. While Bitcoin has been the first cryptocurrency to come under this form of attack, obviously because of its popularity, many altcoins also have suffered from dusting attacks in recent years. For example, in the second half of 2019, close to 300,000 Litecoin addresses were dusted, of which 50 addresses belong to users on Binance. That being said, this video focuses on the definition of dust, how a dusting attack works, how identity is revealed, other actors that use dusting attacks, who can be attacked, how to protect yourself against the dusting attack, and some final thoughts. Dust is a very small amount of Bitcoin that is basically not transactable, usually because the amount would be significantly lower than a transaction fee. Think of the tiny amounts of crypto that often remain as change in your wallet after a transaction that can sometimes be dust. Each cryptocurrency has its dust limit which is the minimum amount required for any transaction to take place on the network. The dust limit for Bitcoin for almost all transactions is 546 satoshis. Any amount below the dust limit cannot be propagated over the network. However, amounts up until 3000 and sometimes even 5000 satoshis are generally considered to be dust for Bitcoin network. Note, since the dust limit is typically a function of transaction fees, amounts that are not transactable today might become transactable in the future with a decrease in fees. Small amounts of a cryptocurrency that remain in an exchange wallet after trading or withdrawing is also called dust, but this is not the same type of dust as what is referred to in relation to dusting attacks. The latter are spread on the blockchain network as a malicious attack, the former are an innocent result of regular trading activities. Before we continue, if you like the content of this series, you can like this video and additionally subscribe to our channel to be updated when we release the other episodes of this season or of our other series. How do dusting attacks work? Scammers know that users might not notice insignificant amounts of additional Bitcoin coming into their wallets. Even if they do take notice, some people might still ignore these tiny amounts as they are of no tangible value. So scammers would go ahead and send many of these tiny amounts of crypto, a process known as dusting, to as many addresses as possible. How then is personal information revealed? For the first step, Bitcoin and other public blockchains have block explorers that are freely available for anyone to view all transactions both past and present. Scammers usually take advantage of these explorers to analyze transactions in addresses they've dusted by using blockchain analysis software. The attacker then tries to track the dusted addresses to see with which other addresses they might be merged in one single transaction. To understand how this works, we need to remind ourselves quickly how the so-called UTXOs of different wallet addresses from your wallet can be merged in a single transaction, helping an attacker to identify which addresses belong to the same owner. A UTXO can be simply defined as each individual transaction that has been received by a particular address in your wallet but hasn't been spent yet. One wallet address has at least one UTXO from the first transaction it received and if more transactions are received on that same address, each transaction is called a UTXO. Compare a UTXO as being the banknote with a certain value and a wallet address being a compartment in your wallet that contains those banknotes or UTXO separately. When the wallet constructs a new outgoing transaction, it will combine several UTXOs from various wallet addresses to get as close to the transaction amount as needed. The exceeding amount will then be transferred to a new change address. However, for example, a wallet that has an address that has one UTXO of 500 Bitcoin alongside with other addresses with smaller amounts, the 500 Bitcoin UTXO address will normally never be combined in a transaction with the other addresses. However, if a dusting attack takes place and a tiny amount of dust in an additional UTXO is added to the 500 Bitcoin address, now it is possible that when the user makes a transaction with his other addresses, accidentally the dust UTXO of the 500 Bitcoin address might be added to the transaction. In that case, the attacker knows that those addresses, and especially the 500 Bitcoin address, belong to the same wallet of the same person or entity. The second step is then to try to link that information to other sources to break the privacy of the user, such as stolen KYC information, which users often need to provide to exchanges or online wallet providers. And then the third step is to launch phishing attacks to extract passwords or private keys from the user or make extortion attempts. 
So just a very quick thank you to our sponsors for this video, eToro, a very famous brokerage and trading platform. In the US, we have access to their full crypto trading platform and their super well-known social trading features. Now, if you're outside of the US, you can also have access to commission-free trading for stocks, commodities, indices, and much more. So like I mentioned, something that they're very well known for is their copy trading or social trading features. You can go on their page and check out various famous traders. You can take a look at their stats and take a look at all the trades they've made in the past and their performance, and you can copy them super easily, set various criteria, press copy, and you're done. When you go into your portfolio page, you'll be able to see your profit and loss and track that real time. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. Definitely encourage you to check out eToro if you haven't already and back to our regular content. Other actors that might utilize dusting attacks can be spammers who use tiny dust transactions to send advertising messages. Though those spammers themselves might not be out to de-anonymize you, other bad actors can monitor the same dust as well. Government agencies can also dust to de-anonymize users. Furthermore, dust can be used by criminals to launder money. A portion of their illegally obtained money in cryptocurrency might be spread as dust over large amounts of random addresses to frustrate chain analysis tools used by law enforcement to follow dirty money. Who can be attacked? Basically anyone, whether new to cryptocurrency or seasoned bitcoiners, can be target of dusting attacks. However, such attacks are more likely to be executed successfully on newcomers who are less informed in the crypto space. There are different methods that can be used to avoid losing your privacy as a result of a dusting attack, though it is fairly impossible to prevent your addresses from being dusted. But at least there are ways to control the damage it can do. In most cases, it will also depend on the particular cryptocurrency you're using, especially as each blockchain has its unique design. First thing you can do is using an off-chain layer to transact. If you're a Bitcoiner, a good option to stay clear from dusting attacks would be to use the Lightning Network. The reason is that the Lightning Network is not a blockchain, therefore has an inherently different design and provides more privacy. Dusting attacks are not possible on the Lightning Network. However, keep in mind that using the Lightning Network is not very beginner friendly and your private keys are essentially in a hot wallet, which means you shouldn't have too large amounts tied up in Lightning channels. So if you have more funds than you can comfortably keep on the Lightning Network, you may still need to practice some of the next methods as well. As even written in the Bitcoin white paper, one way to protect your privacy and mitigate de-anonymization by dusting attacks is by not reusing wallet addresses from Bitcoin that was spent in the past. Generate a new address for each new incoming transaction. By doing this, you will prevent a lot of your transaction history being compiled and attached to one address, which would then all be compromised if a dusting attack succeeds on your wallet. VPNs are used to protect online privacy and increase individual security. A reliable VPN would keep scammers confused as they won't be able to figure out your precise location. Plus, your real IP address would be hidden from anyone. Or you can exchange the Bitcoin which has the dust to another cryptocurrency and the dust would disappear, leaving your transactions untraceable. For example, if you receive dust in one of your Bitcoin addresses, you could simply use an exchange like Changely to exchange the Bitcoins to another cryptocurrency like Ether. Attackers can only trace you when you send funds from the dusted address to other addresses of the same cryptocurrency that you own. However, keep in mind that the fee for doing this will end up being much higher than the dust was in the first place, so the next option might be economically and practically preferable over this method of converting. Some wallets have begun integrating Do Not Spend features in reaction to the increasing number of dusting attacks. The Do Not Spend feature serves as a warning to users not to use the dust as they could be exposed to scammers who are out to obtain personal info. The wallet software will actively exclude the dust satoshis into any new outgoing transactions of your wallet. Other wallets may have a feature of giving a label for dust UTXOs, so you can manually exclude dust from transactions by recognizing them of the label that you gave them. Wallets with such features include Samurai for mobile and Wasabi for desktop. If an address has received dust, you can create a separate wallet and then move the amount to that new wallet while leaving the dust behind. Your other addresses in the original wallet should also be moved to another separated wallet and once again without merging the dust with those transactions. If your wallet does not have the functionality to personally select UTXOs for transactions, but you have been dusted, it might be advisable to import that wallet with your seed phrase into wallet software that does have a UTXO selection functionality so that you can safely move your funds and generate new separated wallets without touching the dust. Please educate yourself into that process well enough before proceeding if you ever come in that situation because these are advanced wallet operations. 
Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies provide a new means for people to access self-banking facilities or be your own bank, but this comes with great responsibility. Failure to properly protect your privacy, private keys and passwords can easily lead to loss of funds to hackers. Admittedly, the true scope and size of actual dusting attacks is not very well known and sometimes even debated. But dust does most definitely exist and addresses receiving dust is also not uncommon. So whether dust is maliciously spread or not, any dust may impose a risk of compromising your privacy and security of your coins. So in any case, users must be vigilant all time so that they can identify any unexpected additional amounts of Bitcoin that is sent to their wallet addresses. This way they can take the appropriate steps to avoid being tracked and consequently prevent themselves from losing their personal information to scammers. Take your privacy and security seriously even when a dusting attack seems harmless. I hope you enjoyed this episode and if you did don't forget to give it a like. If you want to see more episodes of this series Bitcoin Elementary, subscribe to our channel to follow all the new episodes. Looking forward to see you all back soon for the next one. Take care.